Good morning and welcome to worship on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to be together in worship as we lift up the glory of God. As we come together today, there's just a few things I'd like to say. First of all, it's good to be back together with you at 9 a.m. Thank you for joining us. Pass this on to family and friends. Have them join us today or in weeks to come. In addition, you should know there's an offering received at this service. So if you follow along as you access this service, you'll see the QR code. You can give that way. You can go to the church website as well to give, www.first-church.org. Hit the give prompt and follow the instructions from there. In addition, we have communion this morning, and so we will have communion here, and we hope that you prepare the elements of communion at home. I'm glad to be together with Kevin Jones and Emily Corzine and Scott as he leads us in videography. Uh, let us worship God together to the glory of God's name. This is the day which God has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O God, open our lips. And, and our, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. everyone. I wanted to share a small story with you today. I hope you are all well. Today's story is a place is at a place where there were lots of people and everyone from everywhere was on this hillside. There were young people and old people and tall people and short people and rich people and poor people and everyone wanted to see Jesus. 
They came to hear him, to hear what he had to say, to be healed by Jesus. So they brought the sick people forward for him to heal. And some people heard about Jesus. They were simply curious. Jesus came to this place because he wanted to be alone, because he was very sad. Well, that didn't work very well because there was this huge crowd of people waiting for him. But Jesus felt sorry for the sick, and so he healed them. When evening came, all of his disciples said, Jesus, these people have been waiting. Please let us send them home so they can find some food in their own places. And Jesus says, why don't you feed them? And they said, well, we don't have enough food. Look, this is all we have. And they brought two fish and five loaves of bread and said, this is what we have. And Jesus asked the crowd to sit down. And he picked up those five loaves of bread and those two fish, and he raised them up to heaven and said, thank you, God, for this food. And all of a sudden, with the help of those disciples, there were 5,000, there were 10,000, even more people on this hillside, and each and every one of them were fed. Each one was fed. And they had lots of leftovers. Do you know how many leftovers they had? Not just a small box that you take out of the restaurant after dinner somewhere, but they had 12 baskets of leftovers. That was truly amazing, that Jesus could take what he had, give thanks to God, break bread and fish, and give them to all those who were gathered. And that is a sign of God's great love and God's great abundance for all of us, so that we don't have to fear when we feel like we don't have enough, when we feel like we are not enough. This story reminds us that God is enough, And that God will prepare for us and give to us all that we need. And that is a sign of God's love and grace. What a story that is. What a great picnic. I wish I was there on that hillside that day. Why don't we pray together? Dear God of plenty, we hear Jesus say to feed your people. And we will feed your hungry people. Help us to be those who help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to be with you today. We'll see you again later. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 32. The same night he got up and took to his two wives, two maids and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then Jesus said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the 14th chapter, beginning in the 13th verse. Listen for the word of God. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he was ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took what was left over of the broken pieces and filled twelve baskets. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As you might know, we are having a sermon series during this time in August, and uh, we hope that you get to hear all of the different sermons. I might say that what I say at 9 and what I say at 11 are different, um, so I hope if you want to hear both messages, you feel free to tune them in. Today we're focusing on uh, something else in lessons learned from living through pandemic times, because that's what I'm really focusing on today. For such a time as this, seven lessons for living through pandemic times, and this message is about learning from the past and not repeating it. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. So if we're going to learn from the past so we don't repeat it, then we probably need to know what past we're talking about, right? So today I want to, I want to lift up two passages, one from the Old Testament or Hebrew Scriptures and one from the Christian Scriptures, New Testament. And um, in the one passage coming from Exodus, God says to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship at a distance. Worship at a distance. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but the others shall not come near and the people shall not come up with him. So God says, 
come and see me, but worship at a distance. So I want us to keep that in mind. And the second piece comes from Hebrews 11. Um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so how do you have faith when you can't see something? How do you survive in certain times? And so I really want to lift this up because, first of all, we have been told in the times we're in right now to keep a social distance. We have to keep distance. And there's lots of creative ways to say it. One of my favorites is uh, what my um, son and daughter-in-law say to our grandchildren, our grandsons. They say space. So <laughs> space is like they freeze, right? They're getting too close. So they tell them space. And that's not a bad idea. Um, so, but, but to keep a distance is something we're not used to. I've seen so much evidence recently of people not wanting to keep a distance, right? There's only so much we can take, right? So we have this uh, feeling that we shouldn't keep a distance and that we shouldn't wear masks because we've been doing it a long time. I understand that. That makes sense to me. However, we have something unseen in the times that we're living in that it doesn't make any sense to. In fact, that something that's unseen cherishes the thought that we would not keep distance and cherishes the thought that we would be embracing it with each other and breathing on each other. That little something is called the coronavirus, right? It seems to thrive on us coming together, so we're told to stay apart. So I want us to think about this because this first lesson from the past, this idea of keeping social distance from God, the idea is that if you get too close to God back in the day, you literally can burn up, right? I mean, the face of God, the power of God, the strength of God, as understood in the Hebrew scriptures, is such that you've got to stay away or it may be deadly for you because you may just burn up. Well. That's easy to understand. It's like staying away from the sun. We don't want to get too close. It can be the end of us. But there's something to be said that God trusts one man to get closer than the others. And that man is Moses. He has a different relationship with Moses. It's like we're in this time right now. It's like we're living in the same house. He and Moses are like, get along great, right? So Moses has just delivered the people to freedom and God can get a little bit closer and God delivers the Ten Commandments to Moses but he says keep the others away this is really hard to understand but when God says keep your worship over there don't get any closer it's hard for us we take it personally but there's something to be said about keeping a distance from the Holy One we're able to see something more fully when we're at a distance. We're able to see, it's like when you're climbing a mountain, you can enjoy the, the beauty and grandeur of the mountain from a distance. You sweat and ascend the mountain up close, right? And then you can enjoy the vistas from the top as you look back out. But there's something to be said about keeping a distance from God. And God says it's not a bad thing. Social distance for your own good. That's the message, right? This week, we had a small funeral, a small memorial service for Arlene Reynolds. And everyone wore masks. Everyone was trying their best to keep social distance from one another. And one of the things that I was very moved by is that by wearing their masks, my wearing my mask, it was my way of saying, I care about you. And here, Emily and Kevin wearing their masks, it's, that, it's their way of saying they care about me. So everyone wearing masks is perhaps, and keeping social distance, is the greatest love of all. It's the greatest love of all because we have the ability to overcome what we're facing right now if we learn to do this. Now, so we learn one lesson from the past. The second lesson is in Hebrews, um, the faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm hoping for a lot of things right now. And so my faith has grown tremendously. 
because I, I have this deep yearning. And I also know that there's evidence of things not seen. So we are now finding that evidence of things not seen is often deathly, right? So this thing that we don't see, we see its effect. But there's another element that we have carried through thousands of years as a people of faith. And that is the evidence of something else not seen. The evidence of love. We can't always see it. We see the effect of it. We see the reach of it. But we don't necessarily hold it in our hands the same way we do other things. And so what I want you to know is in this time that we are embattled with something we do not see, we possess something that others don't see. And that is the faith and the love and the hope that can get us through this time. So I want us to remember that. Lots of lessons to be learned, space, masks, testing needed. And one of the things I want to say, I want a bumper sticker made. This is not political. This is viral. Okay? We're trying to overcome something that is viral, not political. So let's all do this and move to the other side. Learning lessons from the past, from Moses, from Jesus, from the early believers, and also from those who've gone through other pandemics at other times. We can do this. We can do this. Thanks be to God. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. That there may be purpose and fulfillment of God in all that we do. we may show others this day the love that you have taught us. Christ that the church throughout the world may respond to your call for peace and justice. That those who are in need be helped and comforted. Christ We pray, O oh God, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, members, the family and friends who are listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet and whom we hold in our hearts this day. We lift those aloud or in silence, those names and situations that we hold in our hearts. We pray a special prayer, O oh God, for those who celebrate their birthdays this week and for those who celebrate anniversaries. May your joy live in them and all of their loved ones. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be strengthened by your grace for the tasks of this day. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Almighty God, Give us faith to live this day, not knowing where it will lead, but with the assurance that your love and guidance are with us always, through Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to a time of offering this morning, and each week we take an offering at First Church for a national, local, or international mission or ministry that works for issues of justice and mercy. And today we give uh, our donations to Church World Service. So First Church member Matt Stevens shared with me some information from Church World Service. Because of the generosity of First Congregational Church, both Church World Service blankets 
and kits, emergency kits, um, have been, we have been able to respond quickly to the coronavirus pandemic earlier this year. In the last six months, Church World Service has been able to distribute close to 40,000 kits globally and over 20,000 kits he and blankets here in the United States. So Church World Service has also provided 500 hygiene kits to the Mid-Ohio Food Bank Collective to distribute to our neighbors here in Franklin County. Many people have to choose between buying medicine they need or hygiene products. The hygiene kits that First Congregational Church provides each year helps families and individuals have the soap and other supplies needed to wash their hands during a pandemic. And it sounds so simple, and yet we know that soap saves lives. So Church World Service is also actively responding to natural disasters. The cleanup emergency buckets that we have given from First Church have also been used to respond to situations most recently with the flooding in Michigan. You can search the Church World Service website online um, and read more about these amazing stories of Christian witness here at home and around the world. So please give generously. no matter who you are and no matter what you carry with you this day you are welcome here at the table of grace according to Luke when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples he took bread and blessed and broke it and he gave it to them and he said take eat this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me let us pray we give you thanks God of praise and glory, for the glory and joy of creation, for the work of reconciliation, for the promise of love eternal, for those who walk with us. We sing with joy that you are holy and fill heaven and earth with your glory. Blessed are you, O God. Blessed is your Son, Jesus, our host at this table. Blessed is your Spirit who settles in us and among us. And so we ask that you send your spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, transforming them, making them sacred, filling not for our bodies, but for our souls. With gratitude and praise, we come to your table, ready to be filled, ready to be sent out, ready to be your people in the world. Amen. This is the bread of life, which Christ gives to us, that it may nourish our souls each day. This is the cup of salvation which nourishes us and fills us with all good things, the cup of grace for us. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
pray together the post-communion prayer printed in our bulletins. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. In preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community during this time of pandemic. So please watch your email, our Facebook, or website for any updates concerning our faith community. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll organize to help those uh, in need during this time. Just a reminder that all worship services will be online for the, for, until further notice, so no in-person worship. Please note there are a variety of virtual studies and meetings being offered this week. The 21-day Racial Equity Challenge has expanded during the summer. All of these are sponsored by Christian Education and Justice and Mercy Commissions, so we encourage you to join us. Uh, those are printed in the Depart to Serve. There are two times to join in the conversation, uh, 10 a.m. or 7 p.m., and you'll find the link in the bulletin area. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, EasyTithe, or simply writing a check and sending it to the church in the mail. Uh, no matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the day or for the ongoing um, operating expenses of the church. If you've not already done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings throughout this time for our congregation and engagement and activities and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. The podcast of worship services will be posted um, on the church website by Sunday at 1 p.m. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after today's service. You may find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet or just click on the link at the bottom of the bulletin each Sunday will take you to the coffee hour for a time of community with one another. Let us depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sir. 